Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Four dead, one hospitalized in Spanish town shooting. Gunmen last night killed four people and injured another along railway lane in Spanish town St. Catherine. Dead are 21 year old Nicardo Moore, otherwise called Blacks of Railway Lane, 21 year old Kurt Bennett, otherwise called Mickey of Railway Lane, 34 year old Desmond Brumfield, alias Pepito, elder the site pen in Spanish Town, 38 year old Horace Letman, a teller of Oxford Road in Spanish Town. The police report that about 7 30 pm, the men were along the road when they were pounced upon by armed men who opened gunfire. The attackers then fled. The police were alerted on their arrival. All five men were taken to hospital, where four were pronounced dead and the fifth admitted in stable condition. District Constable Killed in Portland Crash A district constable died as a result of injuries he sustained in a crash on the Orange Bay Main Road in Portland on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as 25-year-old Ramar Steele, otherwise Koshav, assigned to the Portland Police Division. Preliminary reports are that sometime before 9 p.m., Steele lost control of a Honda Civic motor car and collided into a utility pole. Firefighters were called to remove him from the mangled vehicle. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Discovery Bay All Eight School warns passing of teacher Dolores McFarlane. The Discovery Bay All Eight School in St. Anne is in mourning following the death of teacher Dolores McFarlane. McFarlane died on Sunday after a brief battle with cancer. She taught grade one at the institution over 10 years and became ill in January and took sick leave. Principal Marcella Shaw Brown says she is heartbroken by the passing of McFarlane. What makes the heartbreak even more severe is the fact that the second child for McFarlane will be sitting a primary exit profile pep test for grade 5 students this week. The principal reported that the late educator was warm, supportive and industrious. We have certainly lost a gem at Discovery B. Her moral standards that she held, she demonstrated the core value of the school. I'm at a loss for worse, honestly, because she was one of those who I considered my friend. Before I rose to the rank of principal, she was one of my blossom buddies, Shaw Bryant stated. She added, we had a very close relationship. There was never a dull moment with her. I used to laugh. She was the life of the party. And because of the type of the personality she has, you could be drawn to her. Burnt remains believed to be of missing senior citizen found in bushes. Burnt human remains were today found in bushes along the content main road in the community of Cavalier in St. Andrew. The body is believed to be that of 77-year-old Derek Lindsay, who went missing on Saturday. The police are theorizing that a relative of the deceased committed the killing and dumped his body in the bushes. The male relative is being sought by the police. Woman dies after being hit by a car in St. James. A woman who died after being hit along the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James early this morning. The deceased has been identified as Angela Somerville Palmer of a Flower Hill address in the parish. The police report that about 2.30 a.m., the woman was standing along the roadway in the Coral Gardens era when the driver of a Toyota Mark X motor car, who was heading from the direction of Falmouth, lost control of the vehicle and hit Somerville Palmer. She sustained multiple injuries and was rushed to the Connor Regional Hospital where she was pronounced dead. She is the fifth person to be killed in a motor vehicle accident across Western Jamaica over the past 48 hours. St. James Wanted Man Captured A St. James Wanted Man who escaped police custody has been captured. The police say Terence Powell, otherwise called Bobo, was held on Saturday during a targeted operation in Granville in the parish. Powell previously escaped police custody after being held for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. He was apprehended by personnel attached to the Joint Anti-Gang Task Force and was handed over to the Montego Bay Criminal Investigations Branch. Powell is expected to be charged for shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. DJ's brother thankful after surviving gun attack. Reno, the brother of dancehall artist Shano, was one of nine people who were shot during an attack by gunmen on Dunmar Close St. Andrew in late May. Nine persons were shot one fatally when gunmen opened fire on the group that was gambling in the community. The dead man was identified as Sanjay Cousins, 32, 
an unemployed resident of Ambrook Lane in Kingston 10. He was pronounced dead at hospital after being shot in the head, chest and both hands. The other eight people were admitted, however, several have since been released. Rano, who says he is a part of Shane's O promotional team, said he was shot in both feet, his right hand and thigh. He said he is thankful for being alive because he could have been killed. Medeaso, don't. You can't call me and talk to me, don't, he said. Recalling the incident, Rayner said it took everyone by surprise. He said when the shooting began, everyone started running in different directions. He said from what he heard, the gunman came for one specific person. It was reported that about 12.20 p.m., the nan were among a group of people gambling at the premises when they were accosted by a gunman who opened fire. When the shooting ended and the gunman fled, it was discovered that nine were injured. They were rushed to hospital where Cousins was pronounced dead. Rastalane tents after triple murder. The Rastalane community at 8 Mass Bull Bay, St. Angel, is still tense following a triple murder committed in the wee hours on Sunday. Police report that about 12.10 a.m., Kevin Bonfield, 26, otherwise called Kilikili, of Whitehall, St. Thomas, Orville Hermit, 29, otherwise called Mr. Bean, of Pleasant View, Bull Bay, and Earl Jackson, 54, otherwise called Percy, of Pleasant View, Bull Bay, were approached by a group of armed men who shot them. Police arrived at the scene and found the men on the ground. They were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Head of the Kingston Eastern Police Division Superintendent Tommy Lee Chambers told reporters that investigators have not yet indicated a, mur a motive for the murders. We are still carrying out our investigations, but based on what we are picking up, it's the gang warfare of the seven mass and eight mass gangs in the era, but we want to be sure, said Chambers. Based on the feedback I am getting, the era is a little tense because nobody knows what to expect. And when you're not sure what caused the situation, persons are going to be on the lookout. We have police presence in and around the area, she said. In the meantime, the police are appealing to anyone with information on the murders to contact the Elliston Road Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-928-4200, Crime Stop at 311, or the Police 119 Emergency Number. Road Traffic Deaths Search to 207, RSU the number of people killed in motor vehicle crashes since the start of the year now stands at 207. 200 mark was breached following several multiple fatality crashes on the weekend including the deaths of three alleged gunmen who crashed in a Nissan Latio motor car in which they were traveling into a Toyota bus as they tried to elude police at a checkpoint in Hanover. The 207 fatalities recorded so far this year resulted from 182 fatal crashes according to the latest statistics released on Monday by the Road Safety Unit, RSU, which is located in the Ministry of Transport and Mining. Fatalities have decreased by 1% and fatal crashes are down 3% when compared with a similar period in 2021, the RSU said. However, while the projection at the start of the year was that fatalities would decrease by 8%, the RSU said that based on the trend so far, it has been forced to revise this figure and now anticipates a 6% reduction instead. Meanwhile, 20% of those killed in motor vehicle crashes this year are pedestrians. A further breakdown of the statistics show that drivers of private motor vehicles account for 23% of road users killed since the start of the year. Passengers of private motor vehicles accounted for 13% of road users killed since the start of the year. Motorcyclists account for 28% of all road fatalities. Vulnerable road users, pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists, and plane riders account for 56% of the road users killed since January 1. Check to address underperforming subcontractors on highway project. China Harbor Engineering Company Check, which is the main contractor for the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project, will be addressing the issue of underperformance of subcontractors. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic, Growth and Job Creation, Edward Warmington, in making the disclosure, said the pace of work and the dust nuisance remain a major complaint of residents, especially in St. Thomas. Speaking during a tour of the project last Thursday, Warmington told journalists that some subcontractors are not living up to the responsibility of their contract and 
where they are negligent, then China Harbour will step in and have those rectified. He noted that the contract makes it clear that where the subcontractor is inefficient in performance, China Harbour is obligated to step in and do the work itself. At the same time, he said it is hoped that the subcontractors, many of whom are locals, will improve their performance to prevent China Harbour from taking over completely. The tour of the project spanned from Bull Bay in St. Andrew to Long Bay in Portland, where Warmington was given a first-hand account of the state of some of the roads. He made stops in Grand Spend, Morant Bay, and listened in St. Thomas, as well as Long Bay in Portland, where work was observed in various forms. He was joined by senior representatives of the National Works Agency NWA representative from Sheck and other partners on the project. Warmington said that while progress comes with some amount of inconvenience at first, every effort will be made to address the challenges. Meanwhile, communications and customer service manager at the NWA Stephen Shaw said that some of the major challenges being faced by residents should ease shortly. By the end of summer, some aspects of the road will be significantly improved from their current 60 to 70 percent level to completion, he said. This will include the implementation of certain infrastructure works, such as asphalted concrete. The Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project is being carried out by the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, with funding from the Government of Jamaica and China Exim Bank. The project seeks to improve the alignment and capacity of the existing Southern Coastal Main Road in order to make it safe and efficient, free from flooding and provide for further development. It entails rehabilitation of approximately 110 kilometers of roadway between Harborview in St. Andrew and Port Antonio in Portland and the 26-kilometer thoroughfare from Morant Bay to Cedar Valley in St. Thomas. The project also includes the construction of the Maypen to Williamsville segment of Highway 2000 by the National Road Operating and Constructing Company. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.